Hello everybody, my name is Hevanshi. I'm Rev Ben's daughter. Today I thought I would take the opportunity to bring you some information about the novel coronavirus COVID-19 that is causing a pandemic. Due to the excessive amount of information in the media, um, some of which are true, some of which are not, I thought I would get together with some of my colleagues and bring you some information that is fact-checked by the CDC and the WHO. Hello and thank you for taking the time to listen to our, our video today. Let's jump into it. First is a virus, like we said, it's um, transmitted from person to person via droplet. So what that means is each time that you cough, there's a chance that you can spread the virus if you have the virus. So what the CDC and the WHO are recommending for people to do is to cough like this. So <coughs> now what that does, it prevents the virus from, from traveling. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Maheshni Vijay Singha. If an infected person coughs, sneezes, or even talks, uh, they can transmit this virus to people around them through the air we breathe in. Another thing with this virus is that it can be transmitted by infected objects. So if you think you may have touched an infected object or every time you go outdoors, try to wash your hands thoroughly with hot water and soap or use an alcohol gel. But make sure that the alcohol gel has at least 60% um, alcohol in it. Part of the guideline that we will want to encourage people to do is to clean surfaces as often as you can and to wash your hands as often as you can and use good friction. So by that we mean rubbing your hands for at least 20 seconds, getting to the back of your hands, getting to the, the back of both hands, in between your fingers and count for 20 seconds just so that we have a good effective hand wash session. One very essential precaution that you need to undertake when dealing with this virus is to make sure that you are not at all touching your face. So that includes your eyes, your nose, your mouth. You don't know what you might have touched and you don't know if that surface was contaminated. And you touching your eyes, your mouth, your nose or your face can be a very easy entry point for the virus to enter your body. So we have to be very careful, especially when dealing with our vulnerable people, uh, our high-risk groups. When I say high-risk groups, I mean our elderly population that is about 65 years of age and also people with chronic illnesses, for example, chronic lung problems like asthma, chronic liver problems like hepatitis, chronic heart problems, chronic kidney problems, especially people requiring dialysis. And also this means our immunocompromised patients like people with AIDS, HIV, people receiving chemotherapy, people with blood cancers like leukemia, people with complex conditions who have had organ transplants, who are taking medication to suppress their defense mechanisms. So with these vulnerable adults, especially, we have to be very careful. Please ensure that you're eating a balanced diet consisting of the essential proteins, the essential vitamins and minerals that you need to help your body fight the infection. So these things include vitamins such as vitamin C, vitamin D and zinc. And if in case you can't have access to buy the supplements, make sure you eat leaves, greens, vegetables, fruit to boost your immune system up. Another very important thing is to stay hydrated. Drinking plenty of water is very essential to keep your system up and running. So recently I came across this uh, report which was done by the Intensive Care National Audit and Research Centre in the UK. Uh, this report was done on their first 775 patients who were critically ill with the new coronavirus. They found that about a quarter of these individuals were actually less than 50 years of age and some of them did not even have any underlying health conditions. This brings us to the fact that any of us can develop this infection and can have uh, critical consequences. Interestingly, this study also compared this critically ill group of patients with new coronavirus with another critically ill group with viral pneumonia, which is mainly caused by influenza A or influenza B. And they found that the death rate, the mortality rate, was much higher in the group with the new coronavirus. It was 47.9% compared to 22.2% in the other group. So this shows us the gravity of this situation, the how seriously we need to address this issue. Research on this virus is still in its preliminary phases, but from what we know, it's easily passed on. It is recommended that you avoid crowds at this time, especially in places that are less ventilated. You don't know who might be carrying the virus and might be an asymptomatic carrier. 
Asymptomatic carriers are people that have the virus but don't show symptoms of the virus. So they might not be having a fever, they might not be coughing, and you might assume that they are healthy but in fact they are transmitting and spreading the virus. If you for any reason under the authority of your government have to step outside, please ensure that you are maintaining at least a minimum of six feet between each other and practice social distancing. Also, when you return, make sure that any item of clothing, you might have brushed up on something that was contaminated without your knowledge. Your clothing, your shoes, please take it off and wash them thoroughly so as to not spread the virus in your home setting. The surfaces in your house, try and wipe them down. Use alcohol-based, soap-based if you don't have it, and use friction. So rubbing it as hard as you can to kill the virus. It can live on a surface for up to 24 hours. So if you have products like Lysol, disinfectants, hand sanitizer, cough in a Kleenex, any kind of tissue that you have and dispose of it. Don't try to be conservative and hold it for the next time. Cough, throw it out. You don't want to keep those lingering in the household. If you have children, you want to minimize the risk that anybody else can get it. Know the resources that you have available to you in your, in your community and in your household try and have enough medications if you have any chronic conditions you want to make sure that you have enough of those medications in an event that you're unable to go out and acquire your own medications have enough food water and the essentials that you need and be diligent and courteous to your neighbors if you have share some if they don't have they'd be more than happy to be receiving from you and it's the only thing that we don't want to be sharing is the virus. And if you feel unwell, stay home. And um, also take care of yourself, um, maintain um, hand hygiene, eat healthy, get enough sleep, at least eight hours of sleep per day, have a balanced diet, uh, stop smoking if you're a smoker. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please share it with your friends and family. Spread some good information. And also, don't forget to keep praying. Pray for the healthcare workers that are on the front lines. Pray for people that have to be outside. And you stay home and stay safe. Take care of yourself. Take care of your loved ones and be safe. Keep in mind, mind, body, and soul. And you will do well. You will do well. God bless you.